to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. It's Power Talk Friday. You know, at this point, I have done hundreds and hundreds of interviews. I've talked to countless designers, business coaches, experts, and specialists. But what I love love, love, love about this podcast is that even if the conversation is one that we've discussed the topic before, whether it's niching, process, charging what you're worth, every single guest always brings a new perspective and a new way of saying things. And sometimes we have to hear the same thing 20 times before it clicks. And I have a feeling that today you may have some of those aha moments, even though the topic has been covered. Today, my guest is Jeannie Andreessen, a business coach that helps us cut through the emotions and learn to charge more, take clients that truly we want to work with, manage client expectations, and set boundaries. Jeannie comes from a corporate background in hiring and now works with her clients both on foundational business practices and in breaking away from people pleasing. So sounding pretty good, right? <laughs> I know. Before we meet Jeannie, I want to remind you and thank Kravit, our show sponsor. Products in Kravit are many, many, many are ready to ship within days. You can order favorite patterns from your Kravit exclusive collections like their modern luxe collection. And don't forget to browse curated Kravit for everything from decorative accessories, rugs, lighting, and so much more. Keep your design projects on track with Kravit Inc. Right? Go to Kravit.com today to set up your free trade account. All right, let's hear what Jeannie has to say about attracting what you want in your business. Hi, Jeannie. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Thank you, Luann. I'm so excited to be here. Well, you know what? You're already like on the A-list for me because you are a friend of Sarah Montgomery's and you have coached and worked with Sarah Montgomery. And this, this lady is one of the ladies that I've truly come to love and adore. And one of the gifts of this podcast is making the friendship of Sarah. And so you are a leg up and we haven't even had five minutes of conversation yet. <laughs> well, I love that. Yes. Sarah and I worked together last year actually in terms of uh, putting a training program in place for her new hire. Mm. And since then, I have just connected with so many designers and I help them in a little bit of a different capacity now. Um, I still do a little bit of new hire training and onboarding help, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I That's love really it. Where we're at. I love it. And what's so funny is I'm just going to remind all of my friends listening that Sarah Montgomery is also the person that connected me with Desi Cresswell, who went on to come on to this podcast three or four times. She ended up being a co-author in, you know, the second Power Talk Friday experts book. So, you know, if you guys ever have the opportunity to meet Sarah Montgomery in real life in the Chicago area, you should probably thank her <laughs> because she has been responsible for a lot of great conversations on this show. That's so great. Yes, yes, yes. So here's the thing. So Sarah did connect us. And of course, for me, that was good enough of a recommendation. But we do have the questionnaire that we ask you to fill out so that I have an understanding of what it is that you'd like to come and teach me and teach my colleagues here. And there was lots of things that you wrote to me and we're going to cover <laughs> them. But this one line I loved, it said, the clients I help best don't necessarily have the issue of attracting new business, but they have the issue of not taking on business they don't desire and the issue of struggling with managing client expectations and establishing client 
boundaries. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. We need some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm here to help. Okay. So, so talk to us a little bit about that. How did this be, how, how, how did this become your superpower? How does it unfold in the work that you do? Like, where do we start with this conversation, Jeannie? Yeah, absolutely. So really, I got involved. Let me share with you how I got involved in working with designers. So for everybody listening, I am not a designer. I will not hide that I am not a designer because what you do is so <laughs> intuitive and impressive to me. And it's just not what I do. But my best friend for the last 25 years is a designer. Mm. And a couple of years ago, I launched my coaching business. And that was after 10 years in the corporate world, running a recruiting business within the corporate world. Um, and so she and I were connecting one day and she said, Jeannie, you should really start talking to designers. We have no idea what we're doing. And she kind of <laughs> left it at that. And I was like, what are you talking about? You would running your business for seven years. And she said, no, 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 no. You need to just talk to us. Mm. And so I started connecting with more and more designers and it really did blow my mind. It's you are all managing so much. You have so many responsibilities. You have such an incredible talent and there's just little tweaks to be made in your businesses that can bring such powerful results. Mm -hmm. So after talking to more designers and beginning to then coach them, this is where I landed. I kind of landed in two, uh, two main parts. One of them being um, just teaching foundational business practices and then diving a little deeper is really focusing on declining undesirable business breaking people pleasing and really focusing on what it is that you do desire and attracting more of that your way. Well, first of all, I'm with you, right? I'm also not an interior designer and on the regular, my brain fries at the myriad of details that go into a design project. It can be even just the, the refresh of a bedroom all the way to full scale, you know, luxury, you know, with ground up builds or whatever. It's like even just the refresh of a bedroom. It's like the paint schedule, the molding, you know, it's the kind of paint oh, on the, the walls, goodness. on the molding. And, you know, are we yes. taking this furniture? Are we like doing this? Yes. Are we doing floors? Blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs> it's like insane, yes. right? All of what you're saying, Luann, my friend I said, start copying me on some of your emails to your clients and to mm. your contractors. Cause I just wanted to start learning a little bit more of the business. Oh, that and was smart. The, and the logistics. Yes. yes. So, oh my goodness. I just like, as I'm reading this, as I'm just kind of, well, first and foremost, I'm like sifting through some of these emails to be like, what is the message here? Mm. Which is so funny because that just comes from my business background mm. of just like, crystal clear communication, mm. you know, just those foundation, founda foundational business principles. But mm. I'm looking through all this and I'm thinking, holy moly, you all are so <sighs> talented and you deserve, like, this is my passion is like, you deserve every single penny you can earn. And so <laughs> many designers are out there selling themselves short. They're in this fear and scarcity. And I, I brand myself not just as a business coach, but as a life and business coach. I have a life coaching certification and it is because my goal is to break you free of this fear and this scarcity and get you focusing on attracting and asking for all mm. you deserve. I love it. I love it. It's so good. And the thing is, you know, I, I love what you talk about with the email, right? Because I find also, you know, whether it's, you know, at window works or when I'm working with the designers and this just happened recently with the chairman of the board, you know, she had gotten, you know, a couple of, you know, tough emails from a client and she's saying to me, you know, yada, yada, here's the email. This is what I want to answer. And I'm just like, no, step away from the computer. Like, no, mm -hmm. please don't hit send on that. Right. And it's like, yes. because the thing is, it's one thing 
it, communication, to your point, crystal clear communication comes from what is the message we're trying to send, right? Yeah. Um, and and it's one thing when things are easy breezy. It's even another thing when it's under duress, when the client yeah. is giving you a stressful email because they're feeling stressed or blah, blah, blah. But it's it's one. I noticed that one of the things I'm consistently talking about is stick to the point. And if you need an answer, if you need a critical answer, don't put more than one question in that email. Get the answer yep. to that. And then yep. in the, when they reply, then you ask the next question, right? We don't ask three yes. questions, right? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so do you find that, like, I think... I don't, I didn't, I don't know who taught me that. I think I just, I'm like, okay, I need this answer. So I'm not distracting yeah. anything. So do you find that something that you do in your coaching yes. that you're explaining oh, that, right? Absolutely. To be a, so a part of my coaching, I teach my clients the art of the 10 minute phone call mm. because so many of my clients are so afraid to hop on a call to be able to handle something and the beauty of them working with me when somebody works with me and commits to working with me it's usually a three month minimum and they have me ha they have voxer access to me and that actually includes like crisis communication support mm. so when there is a back and forth going on with the client i get really clear as to i help get really clear as to what the problem is and then I will recommend where to go from there, whether it's to send an email back. And yes, certainly like a crystal clear message needs to be in that email. Mm -hmm. But I am such a fan of the 10 minute phone call. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Client, wires are getting crossed a little bit. When is a good time to hop on a call? Do you have time today? I just want to make sure that we that we talk through this live. Mm -hmm. And so many of them get so afraid to do that prior to working with me or when they first hear that. But I train them in the really simple outline also that can take place that allows them to have a really effective phone call, get to the heart of a matter, and really just say, hey, let's push the reset button here and, you know, yada 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 right like, let's push the reset on here my bad i should have said x in the last meeting i really should have clarified that let's move forward right right and getting something just so clear in that via yes phone call versus email when it comes to crisis communication mm. now are there do you have certain like you know here's the three things to hit or here's the the point to start with to open the communication or is it is it really situational coaching where you know what the, you know they call you and they say here's the problem and you talk it through or is there some sort of template ish type of thing for that phone call yeah that's so good I mean it really does depend on what the circumstance is mm -hmm. but above all it's I have them focus on what is the problem what went wrong and how do we course correct. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we just own, Hey, my bad, because a lot of times it is our bad. And mm -hmm. I know that that is what a lot of my clients struggle with too, is this perfectionism. And it's like, no, 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 no. We are all flawed. We are human. We make mistakes. It's fine. So right. instead of pretending these things aren't happening, let's hop on a call, say, Hey, my bad. Don't add any more drama or emotion to it. Because the more you get worked up, the more your clients will get worked up and take advantage of that. So own, make it super neutral, which we're going to talk a lot about today. Make it super neutral, crystal clear. Hey, my bad. Let's reroute. And that's how you really lead that conversation and your clients will follow. So I want to share something with you. I... Um... <laughs> I, I don't know if in any of your experience, corporate or now in your own coaching, if you've used any of the personality assessment tools like Predictive Index or DISC or any of those things. Do you, you work with those at all or no? In my in my uh, corporate background, we use the, cor uh, the culture index. Okay. So we use the Predictive Index in my businesses. And the Predictive Index, you know, like a lot of these assessment tools, lets you know that if you are a visionary personality, if you're a high detail personality, if you're a slow and steady personality, if you're a fast and quick personality, yep. if you're persuasive, if you're more, yep. you know, bull in a china closet, right? Like yep. all the different things. Yeah. And what's interesting is, is that my cousin Eileen Han, who is an expert at organizational behavior, right? And she's a leadership consultant and she was in my Power Talk Friday book. She's been on the show a couple of times. Um, what she 
often will explain, and, and the reason I'm saying this, because we just had this conversation a few moments ago, is that the personalities that are innately high attention to detail, which I think is probably a good portion of the interior design community. I mean, seriously, yeah. right? How could you be, Definitely. right? Um, Definitely. She's, so what she explained to me, because I was having a situation with one of our team members, and I said, you know, I'm just not sure the best way to approach this problem, because now I'm very much about... There's a problem, just like what you said. There's a problem, but it's not a problem that there's a problem. It's only a problem if we ignore it. It's only a problem if we don't yes. deal with it. So let's deal with it and let's move forward. And I just heard her saying to me in my ear when you were talking, keep in mind, Luann, with your employees that are high D, any mistake is painful. She said, yes. you are a very low D. A matter of fact, I am in the three percent category of all peoples on the planet wow. <laughs> for not attention to detail can you imagine yeah. that right i so, think we, this is the same um the same indicator that we used to use because is it like you have a red dot all the way to the left oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah like mine is on the I'm left line the right. yeah. yes and so what she said is she goes low d let alone your d she said is like oh i made a mistake oh tell me how to fix it let me move on and we stand up yes. and we keep going and so yeah. what i've learned though is is that you know when you have a higher level of d you it it hurts more it's it's like yes. you said that it's a the the perfection personality, it actually hurts more. And therefore, it's tougher to say, hey, my bad, right? Yeah. And so it's interesting. And I just share that for any of my friends out there that are like, yeah, yeah I don't like to admit when I'm when I'm wrong. And it's not about being an egomaniac. It actually just feels crappy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it always feels crappy. I, you know, based on uh, this conversation, again, I think we're wired the same way. My A is to the right, my D <laughs> is to the left. And it's, it basically just says you're a great business owner because a... you, say, you just take action and you don't care about making mistakes. That's now, right. that becomes really frustrating when that's flipped. If right. somebody does, I'm telling you, I had years of experience reading our, reading this index because we were in recruitment. Mm. So I was constant, I was in recruitment. So I was constantly reading these indexes and identifying who's the right fit for our role. And for someone who did have the opposite index that I did, I did have to learn how to yeah. manage them communicate differently or how with to them. communicate exactly. with them differently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of that is, I mean, it's just helpful. It's helpful to know how to read people, what other people are experiencing, what's important to them. So you can get to a place of being able to talk to them in a way that really resonates. Exactly. Exactly. So just a little side tangent there. So, so yeah, it's okay if you're not wired like me and exactly. it's okay if you're not wired like Luann, but it's more just how can we take the ways we're wired and use them to our advantage or learn from them? A hundred percent. And, and also then it's like that higher helicopter view of if you are in a tough situation with a client you know one of the things that I've said on the show a thousand times Jeannie is every single problem that you have anything that went wrong whatever the deficiency is you know wind it back to the place where you could have changed the outcome right so that yes. doesn't mean it was your fault really yep. like like the painter put blue on the ceiling instead of white okay so yep. you know that's technically he's the one with the brush. But if you have yep. to wind it back, like, did you give him a painting schedule? Yeah. And you, we could say, well, who thinks it's going to be blue instead of white? If you're going to make a mistake, wouldn't you err on the side totally. of it being white? But the fact of the matter is, is if you had given a painting schedule, there'd be no, yep. you know, that would be clear. And so, yeah. so the thing is, is that when you are more towards perfectionism and it is your innate personality and it serves you as a superpower when you're looking for the perfect accessory and the perfect scale sofa and the perfect lighting you have to remember that in the tough conversations the other person just wants to know that you heard that a mistake was made sometimes right and yes. you don't have to take it as a personal hit right Absolutely. And people just want to be supported mm -hmm. and they want to move on. Like, mm -hmm. I really believe nobody wants to sit and like make anybody feel really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Like never. So it's just, yes, just as you said, Luann, it's just, hey, a mistake was made. 
let's move forward. Mm -hmm. And I know I keep, I keep thinking I'm going to move on for this, but then I think of another tip for it. (laughs) (laughs) The other thing that that occurs to me on it is it's exactly when we won't come to the conversation saying where our part in this was, was, was the mistake. That's when the other person is like, when we keep like, Oh, I get it. Okay. But let's just go, you know, let's just, let's just, this. Let's just. it's like, you know what? Mm. I just need you to say you made a mistake. And I might not be saying those words to you, but I just, well, and then you, this, and then the wood painter that, and then the wallpaper that, and really it's because they're not getting that satisfaction of feeling like they were heard. And so you come out the gate and say, Hey, I, I evaluate, Evaluated this. I see where my firm had a part in this mistake. I also see how, you know, my vendor, this or that or the other thing. But the bottom line is, is I've identified how it happened. So we shouldn't be in this situation again. And today I want to talk to you about the solutions on how we're going to rectify it. Right. So here's the thing, though, like that was so much fun. And I love talking about all of that stuff. I love the <laughs> nuances of conversation there. But we are this the, today. We had kind of decided that we were going to talk about, you know, the removing of emotion and we are talking about it and specifically like how to not take on business that we really don't want to take on and then also sort of overlapping into you know expectations and boundaries but to your email to me it was removing emotion and I like that because not because I my nickname is a tin man or anything in my house but because (laughs) You know, when you remove the emotion, you can get clarity to what you really want and what you want to deliver, right? So talk to us a little bit about this, Jeannie. Yes, absolutely. So what I have found with my clients is this has been a really, this has been a major pain point of theirs is they want you know, they want clients to respect their boundaries. They want to ask for a more desirable design fee. They want to attract better business or they don't want to take on certain business that's coming their way. And what has stopped them from elevating in these ways are their thoughts and their feelings about all of these things. Mm. So for example, there will be a you know, I will ask my client, they'll have a lot of emotion around, let's say a design fee of theirs and a, you know, a project proposal is coming up and they say that they want, you know, what would be fair and exciting and all of that would be a $6,000 design fee, but they feel like that's a lot of money. Mm. And really it's that feeling of this is a lot of money. How, why would somebody pay me for this? How can someone else afford this? This feels greedy. Those thoughts and feelings then have them asking for $3,000. Mm. It's the story between and our ears. That's what I always say. It, <laughs> this is a story exactly. between your ears. <laughs> exactly. And the same thing when it comes to boundaries, it's I feel demanding asking for this. I don't want to be seen as demanding. I don't want to be seen as unlikable. When it comes to declining undesirable, undesirable business, it's I am letting everyone down. Mm. And that is just so not the right energy thought or mindset to have behind your business, what you deserve, what you should be asking for and where you're going. Mm. So that's what I'm really excited to chat through today and help the audience with, help all these designers who deserve every penny and don't need to be settling for crumbs. I am very excited to work through that with you today. Okay. So, so then what, how do you start? What, what is the, what are the, 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 the beginning steps? Because, you know, we've talked about it before and I do know that you need to hear things multiple times in multiple oh, ways yeah. <laughs> till you get that your own aha moment, but it does come down to the stories we tell ourselves. They are not the, the, the you're looking in the eyeballs of your client and you're telling yourself one story about the $6,000 fee. And what I've said to the designers that I've spoken to is maybe they're the exact same moment. Their story is, I hope it's not 10,000. I hope it's not (laughs) 10,000. Like, like you're like afraid to say six and they're worried that it's 10. So, so how do you start Jeannie? What, what, what are the, the, the principles of getting through this? 
Yes, absolutely. First and foremost is get clarity on what it is that you want, because I have found that so much emotion comes from a lack of clarity. So Mm. that's why I say, what number do you want to propose for these design fees? And this should not be a number that is be is a number that you're comfortable communicating because that's oftentimes where someone falls is like, oh, I'll say 4,000 because I'm more comfortable. No, 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 no. What number feels the best? What number would make you smile? What would make you feel excited? What would make you feel respected? Mm. What dollar amount would make you a better designer to them? So this isn't about jumping from a $3,000 fee to a $20,000 fee, because then you're going to be like, you know, having a stomach ache, just trying to ask for that. That doesn't feel good. I want you to feel good about the number. So what is that number? So again, just for the sake of this conversation, let's say it's Mm $6,000. So $6,000 design fee, amazing. Let's get clear on that. And now... I ask my clients, so you're all getting free coaching today, and I actually want you to pull out a pen and paper, so (laughs) go do that. Take whatever number it is to you, again, for the sake of this conversation, it's 6,000, and I want you to ask yourself, why would somebody pay this dollar amount to design their space? Why would somebody pay this dollar amount? for me to design their space. And this is where I always get like crickets. Like my clients Mm. will have a moment of just like, well, I don't know. That's why I'm here. Like that's why I'm (laughs) coaching with you because this doesn't feel good. And I don't think I'm worthy of it. I don't think I'm deserving of it. No, I love being a coach to designers for so many reasons. And one of them is because I'm not one And really, I could be a good client of yours. Mm. So for me, who I am telling you all right now can hardly pick out a pillow. Like, do you know how long it would take me to pick out a pillow? Mm -hmm. I actually, for my birthday, asked my designer bestie, can you just pick out a pillowcase for me? Because I couldn't pick one out for like 18 months. (laughs) (laughs) So that alone should give you a little bit of insight as to what somebody who is not a designer thinks and feels about designing and the process of doing it. So for example, why would somebody pay you $6,000 to design their space? Well, it saves them valuable time. Mm-hmm. I get to do what I do best, which is coach you coincidentally, but I get to go do what I do best. Something that you can do in 10, I don't want to say 10 minutes, I was about to, but I'm like, I know you're all perfectionists out there. So let's say an hour, <laughs> something you can do in an hour to, could take me a year. And do you realize for that whole time, I'm looking at my couch knowing something's missing. Mm. Sometimes I'll spend time online looking at pillows. And again, this is a very small example of pillows, but hopefully it's helpful to you to see what somebody who's not a designer experiences. Mm-hmm. So why would somebody hire you $6,000 for a design fee? Well, it saves them valuable time. It also saves them time because they don't have to worry about the ordering, returning, all of the logistical problems that happen when it comes to designing a space, you're taking that off their plate usually. They get a result that they actually want because theirs would be a disaster. Let me just tell you that right now. Right. And this is the one I'm most passionate about because I am a product of my environment. The result is life-changing. Mm-hmm. So why would someone pay $6,000 to work with you? Why would they, why wouldn't they pay $20,000 to work with you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What you are believe in the value and what you are delivering. But here's what's most important. Why I told everyone to pull out a pen and paper is because you have to believe in it. Right. This isn't about me telling you, this is, I want you to write at the top, whatever that dollar amount is for you. So maybe it is 3000, maybe it's 10,000. Why would somebody pay this to work with me? And I want you to answer that question and get to a place of really, really, really believing in it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And, and and you know what, too? I'm, and also, like, the experience is better. The experience of going from yeah. an undecorated room to a decorated room, if I got to, like, run around in every Tom, Dick, and Harry place to find the crap, that's not the same experience as exactly. you bringing the selections to me and I knowing that you vetted them. They're already the top three things, and the yes. room is done. Yes, this is a luxury service. You're right. working with affluent clients usually. These are people who value their time because their time either allows them to spend time with the people they love most, making memories, or making more money in the way that they are gifted at. Right. So that being said, yeah, designer, a zillion percent. I would love to hire you because you are giving me a result I desire and you are saving me time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. So the idea here is we've had the conversation, every single one of us in our life and on the podcast, but the exercise is to write it down, to look at it in black and white. First, get clarity on what would make you happy. I love the questions that you asked. What would make me happy to show up to do this job? What would make me feel respected? You know, what fee would make me feel respected? What fee really represents the value I'm delivering here, right? And then writing that number down and then writing all the reasons why this number is the right number. Absolutely. And feel free to shave $1,000 off of whatever this design fee is. So if you say, well, why 5,000? I want that to not feel as good. Like I want you to convince yourself, no, 6K is the, makes the most sense for this. It makes me feel great. It is allows me to be the best for my client. It will allow you to maybe not feel like you need to take on another client at the same time. So you can deliver even more to your client. So get so crystal clear on like, why is this best for everybody? Why Mm -hmm. would someone pay you this dollar amount? Mm -hmm. And then I want you, because there are thoughts and feelings associated to then write down all of the negative thoughts and feelings that you have. I want you to write down the, this is so much money. I'm not worth this amount. Anybody else can do this work. Why would somebody afford this? How can someone afford this? Why would they pay for this? Why me write all of it down Mm. and then answer those questions in a way that actually feels good. So Mm. for example, this is so much money. I want you to question that. Is it? Says Mm. who? Says who? You are working with a very, again, I'm speaking to a pretty specific audience in terms of my designers, Mm -hmm. but you're working with affluent clients. What is a lot of money? Right. (laughs) And really just asking yourself that is like, oh, I guess I don't know what a lot of money is to them. These are just my thoughts about it. Cool. Well, how about instead of looking at it as this is a lot of money, we look at it and say, this is money that feels really good to be earning from this project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have this, like anyone else can do this work. Can they? You have me right here, right now saying, no, I can't. Right. Right. No, it's so true. It's so true. I mean, and and the thing is, you know, you learn the more you encounter the general public and your clientele over the years, you learn the word expensive and a lot of money. It has no meaning. What's expensive to me is not expensive to somebody else, which is, you know, it just literally has no meaning. There's no no concrete meaning meaning to expensive. All the thoughts and feelings that we put on it that creates meaning that we need to begin to remove. It's all neutral. $6,000 is neutral, just like a $1,000 pillow is neutral. Right. It's all neutral. Right. But what we have to focus on is would this give my client the result that they desire? That's what matters here. And it, my point number four, Luann, get ready for this one, everybody. But it's don't be afraid to be rejected. Right. If you're in full belief that $6,000 is what makes them is what feels good for this project. It is makes you feel valuable. It is the right dollar amount. And somebody says, "Ooh, that's too expensive," or "Oh, that's not what I was expecting." Which, to be honest, everybody, I'd be very—I'm only going to say I'm going to be very—I'd be very surprised because I just find that my clients have sold 
been selling themselves short and the moment that they start elevating and asking for what they want they're mm. like oh my god it's easy peasy everyone's saying yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm like Err. um but don't be afraid to be rejected because if someone's walking away from it it means that guess what they were going to take advantage of you in some capacity because mm. you should not be doing that work for less they you know you should not be doing that work for less they were looking for something cheaper and that's not you right and that's okay that, and and that okay. is the truth. I mean, it's so funny because, you know, in there a couple of times you've mentioned, you know, what would make me feel good to do this job? What, you know, what would make me feel respected? And because to your point, if if you if the answer to that is six thousand, but you give somebody three thousand and they say, oh, that's great. Thank you. Let's sign the contract. Now, oh you are setting yourself up for I've heard him. I know you've heard it, too. I've heard I've seen it in the designer Facebook groups where they'll be like, you know, I gave this client a break and, you know, wasn't it at my full rate? And now they're asking me for everything yeah. under the sun. Oh, my God. And I'm just like I like <laughs> look at it and I'm like. You gave the price. Did you give yes. the price and say, I'm going to give you the price at too low that I really can't do it for. And uh -huh. I didn't I didn't tell you that I don't expect to do all the things I actually normally would do. No, you just gave the price because yeah. that was the price that you thought they would take or that's the price they asked you to do. But it's like, you know, I use restaurant analogies on the show all the time, Jeannie. It's like mm -hmm. if you are asking for, you know, uh, three entrees well there's a price for three entrees that you don't look at the waiter and say can I get three for the price of two like yep. and the waiter goes nope. okay let me just work three times as hard and you're only going to pay me for yep. twice the money nope. it doesn't happen right no no it does not happen and we that's why I'm like I'm so passionate about this work because I am passionate about making sure it stops happening mm -hmm. because the worst feeling oh my gosh like the worst feeling we've all been there everybody in some capacity in our life if not just your business but it's when you say yes to 3000 or you put you place yourself at 3000 someone says yes to it quickly and you just crumble mm -hmm. because you thought yeah. oh Oh, I, th I thought that was a lot of money. Maybe mm -hmm. I, maybe I could have done this for four or five or six. Mm -hmm. And how does that allow you to show up right. moving it's a, forward when we are meeting with these clients? Right. Not Cause great. you come into it now feeling less than feeling oh, taken advantage of, you know, taken feeling advantage of yes. exactly. when you're the one and who then, did it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then Oh, let's not even get started on client onboarding, but I have a program as well for, that allows designers to implement a really effective client onboarding process because that is the other, I feel like, pain point of this is if you're not positioning yourself well enough in client onboarding, then this 3000 could end up staying with you for a little too long mm -hmm. if a client's then pulling you into other projects and you're stuck at this one rate. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's also just really important to be crystal, crystal clear on the scope of work that you are saying yes to. Mm -hmm. So there is a clear boundary there. If they're like, oh, great, same price for this room, you're able to say, no, actually, let's, you know, let's start all over again with the discovery call so I can learn a little bit more about what you want from that room. And you can position yourself for a higher rate at that point. Right. Don't put emotion into it of, well, they've won. No, you could say, actually, this room would be, you know, a $5,000 fee and just let them respond to it. Right. Right, 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 right. It's so true. It's um, Terry Taylor is another business coach that comes onto mm -hmm. the show um, every few months. She does a sponsored show, and her line is "Pass the salt." It's like, no, that room is is seventy five hundred. Pass the salt. <laughs> it's like yep. you just yep. say it and keep going. So like good. It's, yeah, it's um, because it is just the bit. The thing is in your head, and that is the big message here: is that when you convince yourself of things, and I'm always with with the designers that I. I speak and work with I'm always saying if you're going to convince yourself of a story why don't we just try a different story <laughs> why don't we yeah, just try the story so that true. they Way think it's going to be twenty thousand dollars <laughs> and when you say ten they're going to be thrilled because that that story is as likely to be true as exactly. you they you're saying they think it's going to be five and you can't say ten like we've yes. made them both up 
<laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Right. That is so good. Right. I honestly, I love listening to your show because I find you to be very life coachy in a lot of ways like that, <laughs> where I'm like, yes, I listen to these what would Lou do shows. And I'm like, yes, Luan, yes. Because right? it's true. Let's just change the story in your head. Let's yeah. choose a better one. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what happens though is that I think when we talked about at the top of the show about, you know, you, 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 the clients you help the best are not necessarily the ones that have the issue of attracting business business, but they're the issue of not taking on business they don't desire. And this circles yeah. back to that because, yeah. you know, whether you don't desire the project because the client personality doesn't feel like a good fit or the project yeah. style and type is not a good fit or because of what you're saying, you've underpriced it and you haven't learned how to say your value in it. And now you're in a project that you shouldn't be in. You're in a project that's worth 10,000 and you've charged five and it's miserable yep. for you both, right? It's just miserable for you. And I'm going to say, I think it gets to be a miserable project because not so much because of the client in this point. Like if, if the client if, if you should have priced it at six and you priced it at three and the client has no idea it should have been at six. They're no, hallelujah, no, it's, it's three. So unfair to them. <laughs> right? They're like, hallelujah, it's three. They're not the ones that are, like I often say to designers, if you had charged the rate to your point, Jeannie, the rate that would have made you happy, those yeah. last three requests that they gave you, would you be like, oh yeah, these are what I would do for you? Or would yeah. they be out of boundary? And when the yeah. answer is, well, if I had gotten my full rate, I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Yes. But you have to say your full rate to yeah. get it, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because when you <laughs> say your full rate and then that person doesn't value it and they either push you to go lower, but you stand and you don't, or they don't hire you. Now you're not in that position of doing full value work for less value money. The The thing exactly. never went past go. We did not collect $200. We did not go on to park place. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's what, and, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And recognizing if a, somebody walks away from somebody, someone says, again, I just feel like <laughs> people in this design profession and someone who's interested in hiring a designer. And I really like to focus on ideal clients, not focus on the uh, undesirable ones, but we will get there because I do have a few more notes on that. <laughs> but I like to focus on desirable clients. If somebody is really coming your way and they are a desirable client, they're not going, they're going to, they're not going to bat an eye. They're going to say, this is wonderful. Absolutely. And I have found that those are the clients that are also just the easiest to work with mm -hmm. are the ones who really do value you at the rate that you ask for. And they're not trying to haggle you. And if somebody just says, you know what, this is actually not of interest to me or wow, that's a lot of money, then they weren't actually a client. And I really like to focus on that because I think a lot of energy is spent thinking every lead that comes your way is a client. And that is not the truth. That's so every true. lead that comes your way is, is I mean, it's a, maybe a prospect. We have to qualify them to determine if they are actually a prospective client for you. This is a great distinction. See, this is where you need to hear the same thing from somebody else in a different way. I love that distinction. If we just wake up every day understanding that if in the next 365 days, we are going to get the opportunity to possibly interview 30 new clients, then we should not expect, there is no reasonable, logical expe expectation that 30 out of 30 people will be our clients. And when we know yep. that from day one, then we don't push round pegs into square holes when it doesn't yep. feel right or the price isn't able to be agreed on the right way or, you know, they walk away. We thought it was all good, but they walked away. It's knowing, yep. you know, it's funny because coming from a sales background, I'm always like, I got to hit 25 people to get one yes. So I yes. never expect... You know, I'm looking for the one out of the 25. But when yes. we think about more of a service boutique -y type thing, you can forget that perspective and think, well, anybody that reaches out to me through Instagram or through my website or through a referral, you know, 
is probably, you know, like you can see, it's my job to convert them to a client, but actually mm -hmm. it's not necessary. It's your job to determine. No, it's your job to, yes, it's mm -hmm. your job to qualify them. Mm -hmm. It's your job. And again, these are the foundational business principles that I've really teach because I just learned, oh my goodness, you're saying, you know, designers are out there saying yes to everybody and feeling bad about it. Mm -hmm. And so it's, okay, how do you want to run your business? Who do you want to work with? At what price point do you want to work with them? What are... And what projects do you want to take on? And really getting clear on those three things allow these leads to come your way and you're able to sift through them, let's say, if we're, we want to use a visual, sift through them and say, yes, no, 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 yes. And just give you, it just helps your brain much, much quicker determine who a client is for you. And that's why I love the idea of, I love questionnaires. I think that those are essential. That's, I'm, I am going to use that word. Um, I think questionnaires or intake forms, however you want to say them, are essential to running an effective and efficient business because it allows you to qualify these leads in advance. And you're saving everyone time. You should not get in, someone should not be spending you know, 45 minutes filling out a 50 minute questionnaire. If they're not an ideal client of yours, that mm. should be a 20, you know, 20 question questionnaire. And you determine quickly if this is, or is not a client of yours. And that just allows everybody to be on the same page and to feel respected and for nobody to feel like you got too deep with anything. Mm -hmm. And that's also what I found with my clients is they struggled to decline undesirable business because they would have a client that would be taking these questionnaires and answering these questions where by the end of it, they're like, okay, well, I just became best friends with my designer. I shared with them what my kids' <laughs> names are. I shared with them where I like to go for fun. I shared with them all of this. And my it's like, Oh my goodness. Yes. No, let's focus on what we need to know and get really clear on and get really clear on, is this person a client or not from the beginning? We can ask all those fun questions later. So now the question, the, the other part of this though is, is, you know, as the notorious tin man in the world, I can be very <laughs> cut and dry and say, Hey, you don't like the price. See you. Bye. Yeah. Hey, this you is the thing. Me both. <laughs> right. And so, but so, so there's our colleagues though are like, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Ladies. I'm going to make yeah, my okay. group. I'm going to make my questions. going to be this, but how do I, to your point, remove the emotion where I don't feel bad for declining the client? Yes. Oh my God. I'm so glad we're getting here. So <laughs> to just share, cause some people are like, why, how is Jeannie so good at this? Like, where does this come from? So I was running a recruiting business in the corporate world. I was interviewing hundreds and hundreds of candidates. I probably interviewed thousands of candidates in my career. And I had, I got really good at declining. I undesirable, I feel like is the wrong word, but declining <laughs> candidates who not were not the right, the right fit. fit, yeah, not the right fit for a role that we were hiring for. And I will tell you, because this, I have found transfers really well into what you all do. And this is how I got good at it. Instead of feeling like I was letting anybody down, I focused on all they were getting from me telling them the truth. And again, I don't mean to be heartless in that because I'm not like mean to them, but really being very clear upfront. So going back to that question of why is hiring you as a designer best for everybody? Why is not taking on this business best for everybody? Mm. And here's where I do want you to focus on the client because for you, it, it might be a little more clear to you. Well, you know, this is best for me because it's not a desirable project and the budget's not there and whatever, but how is it best for the client as well? Well, they don't have a designer that said yes to something and then is treating them, you know, like they're on the D list mm. instead of their A list, which so often happens when designers take on smaller projects mm. that they don't want to take on. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, the client is not getting a designer who's not excited about their project. Right. That is a really important one because I personally, as just a human in this world that has economic power to buy things, I don't want anybody taking my money and not feeling great about working with me. 
Yeah, that's a great spin, Jeannie. That's a great spin. That one is so important to me because nobody wants anybody to be taken on as, I don't like using charity case, but like, don't do anyone any favors here. Right. People are spending their money and they're excited about the project. You either get excited about the project or don't take their money. Right. I mean, that's like such a true, another, another thing that you, you know, we hear all the time, but it's said in a different way. It's the spin there is if you, cause I literally, if I get one more email that tells me I'm a people pleaser, right. And please go ahead and send me the emails. I totally appreciate and love to read what you tell me. I don't mean to say that I don't, but literally dozens of designers have said that phrase to me, yeah. Luann, I'm a people pleaser. It's hard for me to set the boundaries. I struggle with being able to say no, even when I should. And when you put that spin on it, Jeannie, it's yes. Okay. So being a people pleaser is not a negative thing, right? Like that's not a bad thing. Like that you're a caring person and you want the people around you to be pleased. Like how is this, Mm -hmm. how did this become a bad word? Right. And so, but the, but the good spin on that is let's be a people pleaser and let's not dishonor this client by being less than fully in when they are going to spend all of their money, whether it's the amount that, you know, you agree, you think is uh, it's still their money. So if you ask them for 3000 and you should have asked for six, they gave you the three. And to your point, Jeannie, they deserve somebody who's smiling and happy to show up for it. Yeah, I love that. Definitely. And that's what I would focus on in the corporate world. I'm like, okay, this person's not the right fit. So instead of me thinking like the way that I would tell them is, Hey, you, I want to, again, I hope people have their notepads out because it's about being so clear and neutral, remove the emotion. What is this? They want X you deliver Y at Y price point. Mm. This is not a match. Have it be that clear right this it's just not a match there's nothing wrong with their project there's nothing wrong with that dollar amount there's nothing wrong with any of that do not sit there thinking what an awful awful prospect nobody's going to want to work with them i am their only hope (laughs) of course you're saying yes to them if those are the thoughts going on in your head so instead choose different ones hey wait a second i deliver why really really well if they can't meet me there then this is just not a match and that's okay Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, so great to, you know, chat with you. I love that you were introduced through a former client of mine. That being said, I really excel at Y. You're really looking for X here. I just don't know if that is a match. So that being said, here's what I would recommend that you do. Mm -hmm. And really leading that conversation. Again, I'm all about the phone call because I just think these Phone calls are such a great way to be able to share your personality, that you're able to be really likable, and you're able to really lead the conversation. Mm -hmm. So it's, and again, this could be five minutes. This could be they sent you an email, they're looking for X, and you do Y. Hey, can you hop on a call? Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, thank you so much for reaching out. I'm so glad that my former client had recommended me and that you loved that space. I really excel in Y and it really seems like you're looking for X. So that being said, here's where I would go from here. Right. And I like, if you really want to run this well, give them some resources, mm-hmm. give them a resource, give they them a referral the, you know, to a friend. Yeah. That, give them a that referral does to that a work friend when that price point. or as you could say you, what I think you're looking for is you may just want to go to a local furnishing store and talk to the designers there. Mm-hmm. Like whatever it is, just give them some direction. That's what everybody in life is just looking for is just direction. And it's when you really leave them hanging that that can become a tr- a a challenging way to end the conversation mm. once you've declined them. Right. So it's just, Hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Prospect, thank you so much for reaching out. Not the right fit. Here's why this is why it's best. We don't work together. Feel free to share that information. And here's where I would go from here. You might want to contact this person. You might be looking for virtual designers. Those exist nowadays. And here's another resource is I just say, pin a lot of stuff on Pinterest and bring it into a local furnishing store. I love it. Bada bing, bada boom, you're off the call. Right, right. (laughs) Yeah. And and the funny thing is, is I think because we like designers understand that 
you know, like all through the, your career, you're at different phases. And you know at some point you were at that phase where 3,000 felt like the right number. But yeah, now yeah. 6,000 is right. Yeah, so totally. It's, so it's not like you can't do it at three. So I think that's why you feel obligated to do it. Whereas if you think about it, if you were a car dealership, right, and your friend, you know, you, somebody, you sold somebody a Cadillac, and they came in and they said, oh, my friend Susie bought a Cadillac from you and I really, really love it and it's beautiful, but I want a Mercedes, so can you sell me a Mercedes? You'd be very clear to be like, we don't have Mercedes here, Susie. Yes. But my friend, you know, Billy down the block has yeah. a Mercedes dealership. Like, you wouldn't be all tied up in knots. You'd be like, that's yeah. amazing that she sent you here, but she's mistaken. We only do Cadillacs here, right? Yeah. And so we got to have to process it that way that it's yeah. just because you could turn a Cadillac into a Mercedes or vice versa doesn't mean you do and you should and you're at that end point in your career where you will. And it's your uh, your prerogative not to. Absolutely. And where I find a lot of designers run into trouble on this is they haven't decided yet what it is that they do and don't do. Mm. And I think that that really causes so much pain it causes so much pain because you're constantly torn this way, that way. You've, you know, just a week ago, you helped somebody else for less money. No, 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 no. Let's just decide moving forward. What do we want? Where do we want to be? What are we selling? What makes us feel good? What price point? And that, and just, and if you're really deciding, d- if you're really deciding, you're cutting off all the other options. And that's not to say you can't change your mind. That's not to say that something comes your way and you're like, you know what? That actually feels good. Go ahead and take it. Right. But the decision you're making is that when certain business comes your way and it doesn't feel good, it's just, Hey, I do Y now. And you're looking for X. And you know, a lot of clients I've also had struggle with former clients coming back to them saying, Hey, you know, I have a, a new house or a new room. I'd love for you to design it. And they designed it way back when they were just starting out for, you know, pennies, let's say. And they're like, well, I feel like I have to work for that rate. Not at all. You just right. say, hey, Miss, you know, hey, Mrs. Client, so great to hear from you. You know, I, I'm so glad that you're excited and working with me again. I now charge X. Right. Don't assume they can't pay it. Just say, I now charge X dollars an hour. I'd love to hop on a call if this is something you're still excited about. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you have to just say that because yeah. of your clients will just be like, okay, like I didn't think that your price prices hadn't raised in seven years. (laughs) Like, like, you know, everything else went up. Why wouldn't you? Right. Right. Seriously. Think about it like that. Think about somebody being like, if you were to do it for the pennies, you did it for seven years ago, there'd be like, oh my gosh, how has she not grown? Like everybody's meant to grow and evolve in this world. You included. I love yourself permission to grow. Right. And I love the clarity on you know, I always say on the show is know what you will do and what you will not do, right? That's the thing. It starts with that. Do I have a minimum number, a minimum square foot? Do I have any minimum that I will not leave the studio for? And, you know, and then, and there can be other criteria in it, right? So maybe like I've, I've met a lot of designers here that we do work with at Window Works where they will only do full projects, right? So whole house projects, unless though you are a repeat client or you are the child of a repeat client. <laughs> like, like mm-hmm. that's, that's what, that makes sense to that person. So if you're, totally. you know, if you're a repeat client and I did your whole primary home, but now you want to do just the kitchen in your lake house or just the, your, the bedroom in your beach house, you know what? You're my past client. I will do that for you. But your friend yep. at the at the beach next door that just wants to do the bedroom ixnay on that. Like like it's not happening, right? It's not even yep. that doesn't they don't even extend it to the referral. It's them yep. personally or their children. And so you can yep. decide it's them personally, it's their referrals, it's them personally only, you know, blah blah blah. But it it does become you know, it's funny because I've had similar experience over the years in doing and speaking engagements. Right. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's just like when a client will look at a designer and be like, 
how can you charge, you know, two seventy five an hour and then tell me it took an hour to pick a fabric? Like I can't pay that's ridiculous. And you're just yep. like, you know, this is what I do though, right? And I'm like and I all the same thing. It'll be people who are like, Oh, but it's only one presentation and I'm just like Right. But it took me a thousand of them to do it as well as I'm going yeah. to do it for you. Absolutely. Right. Like it's not the first, not my first rodeo. Uh, <laughs> so well, good. Yes. Yeah, they say an electrician might charge a thousand dollars to to cut the right wire. Right. But really you're paying that it might be a dollar to cut a wire. <laughs> You're paying that $999 for him to cut the right I one because it. of his experience. Exactly. And that's what this is. It's just making sure that you are being valued and you value yourself. You are asking for that. You're put, giving yourself permission to grow. All of that is exactly what you mm-hmm. deserve. That is exactly how you deserve to run a business. And the other thing too is you mentioned this in your uh, intake form to me that mm-hmm. When you do remove the emotion, when you are entering a process of having a conversation with somebody who comes back to you one year or five years later, whatever it Mm -hmm. is, and your rates have changed, remove the emotion, you know, blah, 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 say the price. We know that most will say, okay, but some will not. And that's okay too, right? Because you're leaving that level of client behind. Yes, absolutely. And Oh my gosh, I'm so glad we just mentioned this because here's the the last main point about this I have, but of course that's famous last words. Um, (laughs) Here's the thing, everybody, when you are declining an undesirable prospect slash letting them know who it is you work with, you are positioning yourself for more of what you want to come your way. Mm -hmm. So if you are saying, hey, Mr. Client, so great to hear from you. I do why you're looking for X. You can, you also should say, I highly recommend you say that being said, if your project evolves to Y, please reach out to me. Right. That being said, if someone you come across is looking for Y, I'm your girl. Right. Like really positioning yourself. That is how you begin to evolve and move into what you want instead of just settling for the things that come your way. Mm -hmm. And, and there is a transition and, and, and unless you're going to stay, at the same level your entire life, which is your prerogative as long as you're profitable. Totally. Right? I'm yes. fine with it as long as you're making money. Just don't stay yeah, at the same level because you're, you're afraid to go to another one. Yes. If you desire to go to the next one, go. Don't stay stuck. But, you know, if you do desire to go to a next level and you do find the courage and the confidence to do it, understand there are the first couple of times you say it, it's likely to be uncomfortable. But once you say it two or three or four times, it gets easier and easier because what happens is just like everything else in life, you're going to have moments of positive reinforcement on that. There's going to be the one client that was, you were a hundred dollars an hour and eight years later, they called you and you're two twenty five an hour. And there'll be one that says that's insanity. Thanks so much. I'm going to Ethan Allen. There'll be another that says, I'm so happy for you. You deserve yeah. that. Yes, let's yeah. work on this. Let's do it. Right. It's like you're going to get your positive reinforcement. It might not be the first time that you try it on, but it's yeah. go. you're going to. It's just literally going to happen. If you have earned your chops, you have actually you know, gotten yourself, your skills and your business skills to the level to deserve the next level, you will get that price at that next level. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So, so good. I mean, is there anything, you know, missing from this conversation that we should bring up before I thank you? And I think I have to have you on the show again in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think we covered a lot. Yeah. And the last thing I want to do is have anybody be in overwhelm. So that being said, really just get my number one piece of advice is get clear on what you want. Yeah. Thoughts, feelings, yeah. all of that are going to come up. But I think I coached you a little bit through those. But what matters most is you get really clear on what you want, because when you get clear on what you want, you start thinking a little bit more about what's possible for you. And that's mm-hmm. when you start take, taking action on how to break the insecurity and break the fear and break the disappointing people or the guilt that you might be experiencing 
and start moving into a place of, hey, maybe this really is possible. Maybe I can really enjoy my work and be valued and be paid at the dollar amount mm. that I desire. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I love yeah, that. Get clear on what you want. And again, I'm just going to pull out something that you said in there that I think is very important to repeat is you said, get clear on what you want. And then understand that thoughts and feelings about that are going to bubble up. Like, that's the thing. It's like we say, go get clear on what you want, but also it's okay when those thoughts and feelings bubble up about it, but just keep pushing through them, right? And keep talking through it instead of, oh my goodness, but should I have that? Well, why shouldn't you? Like you said, why shouldn't I have this? Do I deserve it? Well, why wouldn't I deserve it? Like the thoughts and feelings will be there. That's not bad. It's only bad if you stop and sit in them, right? Yes. So I love it. Definitely. And then you have a, um, a, a download that, you know, scripts and templates to decline undesirable business. That sounds pretty yes. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been, this was a love child from the clients who have come my way who are like, I mean, I really struggle with this. Do I just say no to somebody who's not the right fit? Yes. So I created a download that is scripts and templates to decline undesirable business. And there is phone scripts in there for you, email scripts in there for you to just make this easier. And my, I have even notes in there, advice for you as to how to leverage these. But my number one piece of advice is record yourself, mm. practice, say these things out loud, listen back to it, say them to a friend, listen back, you know, have them give you feedback that is how you get comfortable with this before you actually deliver it live on the phone. Mm. Or you can just work with me and I will coach you through it <laughs> because I role play with my clients all the time so that they get comfortable with these conversations because they're important ones to have and they just only support you evolving, which you deserve. Love it. Love it. And what 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 um, web address do you want us to go to to learn about you and to get this d- uh, download? Yep. So genieandreessen.com is my website. So I'm sure Luann will put yes. that in the show notes. So genieandreessen.com is my website. On there, you will see uh, the scripts and templates for declining undesirable business. You can also check out the programs that I have. I have created a program called Business School for Designers to teach designers the stuff they, the business stuff they did not learn in design school. Mm. So you can feel free to check that out and um, maybe we'll work together. Nice. Very nice. Well, I appreciate you, Jeannie. It was so good. Um, We certainly do share a lot of the same theories and thoughts and, you know, outlooks on, on, on how to, you know, show up and make sure that we do really express our value out in the world and then have the confidence to ask and get our value. So I appreciate you. Thank you for sharing all this with us. Absolutely. Thank you, Luann. Hey, before we start, I want to say hello to Sarah Montgomery. A shout out to you, my friend, for another terrific introduction. Sarah introduced me to Jeannie, and she also introduced me to Desi Creswell. So thank you, lady. Big hugs to you. Now, so many great nuggets in today's conversation that I want to pick apart. Let's start with the 10-minute phone call for crisis communication. Jeannie said that she believes in drilling down to three things, talking about what the problem is, what went wrong, and how to course correct. And I know it can be hard for some personalities to process mistakes. It's something that I've learned from Eileen Hahn, my cousin, my co-author in the Power Talk Friday expert series. And she is also a 30-year behavioral organizational consultant and leadership consultant, right? She has explained to me that we don't all have the same personality and it's not necessarily something we choose. I mean, it just isn't, right? So my personality and maybe yours as well, we make a mistake, we take a hit, we process it and we move on. However, she's taught me that for other personalities, it can feel much larger, that a mistake hits your core and it sometimes makes it hard, hard to go into the hard conversation with the vulnerability that you need in order to manage these conversations. Because in the tough conversation, the one thing that people want and need to hear from you is that you get it and that you see where the mistake is, right? And the key to doing this, if it's hard for you, And the key for doing this, even if it isn't hard for you, but the key is to take your emotion out of it. Like Jeannie said, neutralize it for yourself. What are the facts? You know what? Here's what happened. I made a mistake. 
but I figured out a pro the solution and this is what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again, right? When you do this, you earn respect. You put your clients at ease and you will be able to move forward much easier, right? It's like I always say to you on the show, focus on what you could have done to change the situation, even if somebody else dropped the ball, right? Even if it really wasn't your fault the last step. Because there is always something we could have done differently that would have led to a different outcome that would have prevented the person who it looks like it was their mistake to not have made that mistake, right? And when you can do this, then it makes it easier to own up to it and move on because I think in understanding how not to repeat a mistake, it's what... I guess it's what I'm just sharing with you that works for me. When I understand how not to repeat a mistake, I just feel like, okay, things happen. They're not always the way you want them to go. But as long as you have some roadmap for not being in that situation again, right? So now let's talk about Jeannie's method for turning away undesirable business. I love this. How often do we talk about how to raise your rates and charge what you're worth? Or how often we talk about saying no to the wrong project? And when you say no, it opens the door for the right one. But no matter how many times we say it, knowing it and doing it are often two very different things, aren't they? <laughs> I know it. I know it because I talk to you guys, right? So no matter how committed you are to charging more, the doubt starts to creep up and you end up talking yourself down and taking on projects that you really aren't happy about, right? But Jeannie gives you this brilliant formula for conquering all those little objections, starting with writing down the number that you want to charge. What number will make you feel respected? What number will make you feel excited? I love that little nuance that she talked about there. What number will make you feel excited to do the work? What number would genuinely make you feel good, right? Love it for so many reasons. First of all, it isn't a number somebody else gives you, right? You could talk to designers, your colleagues all day long and hear about the rates and think you should be charging more. But at the end of the day, you are the only one who knows what number is actually truly going to feel good to you. Second, it gets you thinking about what you want and need in terms of building excitement around a project. Often I hear designers charging less than they wanted to and then feel like they, they'll talk about feeling like they're being taken advantage of, which sort of, you know, I look at them like, hmm, right? So if you do the work to come up with the number, then it's on you. You're the one that needs to do it. In no world are you going to tell a client that you'll charge 3000 but you really wanted 6000 and the client's going to say, oh, I think I should give you six, right? They're just not. No one is, right? It's you. You're the one that knows what it's worth. You have to say it out loud, okay? That's, that's how you do it. You just say it out loud. Feel it, understand it, analyze it. Know based on your experience, your expertise, where you are in your career, where you are in the, the past projects that you've done, where your team is, if you have a team, and then just put the number on it, okay? Then, G then Jeannie says to work through the objections, right? Because they're going to come up the first time, probably the first few times. You're going to try and talk yourself out of it. Change doesn't come without discomfort. But if you can walk through it, if you can work through it and push through it, after a few times, you're going to feel that confidence and it gets more comfortable. And once, once you actually receive the number that you're worth, once it happens once or twice, you won't turn back. You just won't. You'll just, you'll have that, what she says, the excitement for the project, and it'll be a much more pleasurable experience. Guess what? For both of you, right? Because there was an aha moment in there that I don't want to gloss over. When I asked Jeannie about how do you really do this? How do you stop yourself from feeling bad and caving because you don't want to say no or turn this person away? She said something very smart, and you have to remember this. Instead of focusing on how that person is going to miss out, think about what you are giving that person. It isn't just you that benefits when you turn down the wrong, wrong project. The client actually does too. Because you might think you're doing a good thing by lowering a rate and helping someone out, but in the end, are you really? If you charge less than what you, that will really make you feel excited and respected, 
you know, happy to show up and do the work. Don't you think that comes through, right? And doesn't every client deserve someone who is excited and someone who is the right fit, someone that can work at that price and feel that respect? Because there is someone else, wherever you are, whether you're charging 85, 185, 485 an hour, there's always someone that is just coming up right along, right next to you, right beside you, right behind you, that that number feels good to them, right? So everyone deserves to work with someone who is happy to be there. And finally, I just want to emphasize that when you do this work, when you raise your rates to the place that you know is the place that you are worth, and it is the place where you are earning what you want to make, of course, there are going to be clients who say no, and that's okay because you'll both be better off. All right. Great conversation, Jeannie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And make sure that you guys go to her website, um, JeannieAndreason.com. We will put it in the show notes. Okay. And get her scripts and templates for declining undesirable business and poke around for her programs and services. If this is an area that you're struggling with and you think Jeannie could help you. All right. Thanks tons for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. Really decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.